welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Federal lawmakers resume from prolonged recess even as National Assembly legislative aides protest non-payment of wages. A look at issues and activities that transpired at the National Assembly while the recess lasted. Leaders of Pan Yoruba Social Political Group by Feni Ferry meet with former President Olusegun Obasanjo behind closed doors. And South Africa's finance minister Nlala Nene resigns with the links with Gupta family in corruption scandal. TV.com has more information for you and on youtube.com forward slash channels web you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu, and then follow the instructions. Some leaders of the Yoruba Social Political Group, Afeni Ferry, have met with former President Olusegun Obasanjo behind closed doors. The outcome of the meeting, which lasted for about two hours, was not disclosed to journalists, but it may not be unconnected with happenings in the polity, especially ahead of the 2019 general elections. The group has, however, promised to make a formal pronouncement on the choice of its preferred candidate for the elections. 2019 is uh, the race going to be exciting. Now we have, uh, like a, a man of God said, we have two eagles uh, on the scene. But the most important thing for us is the structuring of Nigeria. And uh, clearly, you can know, Afeni Ferry will always stand with the candidates that stand for Nigeria to be restructured. No debate about that. Because that's, without the structuring, we are going nowhere. We have had somebody saying that 2014 reports have kept in the archives. We have asked somebody saying that spreading out that Nigeria can be restructured and how to do it clearly. So the, the choice is clear. There are no ifs and buts. We know where to go. We are going to make a pronouncement very soon. But the pendulum is swinging, but you know where to think. Two legal matters and the governor of AKT State, Ayodele Fayoshe, has filed a 20 billion naira suit against the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for placing him on a watch list and directing that he should be arrested if he attempts to travel out of the country. Governor Fayoshe, who filed the suit at the Federal High Court in Abuja, is alleging that the EFCC's action is not only a breach of his constitutional immunity, but has also exposed him to public ridicule. The governor, through his counsel, has given the EFCC 72 hours to withdraw the directive to security agencies to place him on the security watch list. He also wants the anti-graft agency to publish a written apology in three national newspapers and social media. The governor is also seeking a declaration that the statements contained in a purported letter by the EFCC on September the 12th and addressed to all security agencies in Nigeria, portraying him as a criminal a fugitive and a runaway from the law are untrue. The governor filed the suit at the Federal High Court in Abuja. Meanwhile, the Federal High Court here in Lagos has granted bail to Mr. Benga Makonjola, an aide to the Senate President and two others who are standing trial over an alleged 3.5 billion naira fraud. The defense counsel, Mr. Paul Ekoro, who had argued that the bail application on behalf of the accused, then urged the court to admit them to bail on liberal terms. He also offered an assurance that they will be available to stand trial. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had brought an 11 counts of fraud against Mr. Makonjola, a Deputy Chief of Staff to Senator Saraki, along with Merros General Services Limited and Obiara Amobi. The accused persons pleaded not guilty to all the charges. And after listening to the arguments, the presiding judge, Justice Bab Skeomi, granted them bail in the sum of 250 million naira each, with two sureties each in like sum, who must be owners of landed property within the Lagos metropolis. He then adjourned the case to December the 4th for trial. And staying in the courts, but this time in South Africa, the trial of a Nigerian clergyman, Pastor Tim Amotosha, continued today at the Port Elizabeth High Court. The leader of the Jesus Dominion International Church is now facing 63 counts and 34 alternative counts of human trafficking, racketeering and contravention of the Sexual Offences Act, along with two other female accused persons. All three accused refused to enter a plea to the charges, and so Judge Mandela Makoala entered a not guilty plea on their behalf. 
The case resumes tomorrow, and the first alleged victim is expected to take the stand on Wednesday. As the NBA, we, we, we have always said that this man has got a case to answer in a court of law, and I think that's what is going to happen, and we are pleased with it. I don't feel bad because we are law-abiding citizens. I believe the Constitution is there to direct things, and if the, the judge's discretion is based on the Constitution, so we don't have to object. So I'm still feeling good. You know, I'm very optimistic. I know that the best will come out of it. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Ibrahim Adra. Ibrahim. Good to see you, Ejo Maeloe. Here in the nation's capital, President Muhammad Buhari has offered an assurance that no part of Nigeria will be ignored under his watch. The president spoke when he received a delegation from Cross River State that visited him at the State House. Also at the State House were two APC governors, Ibikulia Moso of Ogun State and Abdullahi Ganduja of Kano, as well as a Muslim delegation led by a renowned scholar and continental leader of the Kadiria movement. The governor of Ogun State is the first caller at the presidential villa. After the meeting, Governor Moson left without speaking with reporters. Then, a delegation of Kadiria Islamic sect led by the movement's continental leader. The meeting was held behind closed doors with the governor of Kano State in attendance. Kadiria movement of Africa, headed by Sheikh Karibullah, Sheikh uh, Nasr Kabara. It is a very, very powerful organization. It has so many followers, and it is anti-extremism. Uh, it is anti-Boko Haram. It believes in the normal religious injunctions uh, as professed by our Holy Quran. A statement from the president's senior special assistant, Gerba who indicates President Buhari calling on religious leaders in the country to assist government overcome forces of destruction through education. He quotes the president as saying, those who indoctrinate children and plant explosives on them to harm innocent people do not belong to any religion, but terrorists who should be identified and fought until they give up their evil ways. End of quote. Excellency, Mr. President. The delegation of Ugeb Kingdom and Cross River State, led by its traditional ruler, President Buhari says no part of Nigeria will be ignored under his watch. His guests had told him earlier that they were grateful for the appointment of their sons into positions of government. We are also asking him to help us stem out <coughs> the menace of uh, communal clashes in our area. That is one of the major problems. We have also asked him to upgrade our institution, the only government-owned institution in our local government. Both delegations expressed happiness with the federal government and the President Buhari, pledging their support for him in the 2019 election. From the... Meanwhile, the Director General of the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency, Mr. Alex Nwebu, is allaying the fears of Abuja residents over the possibility of a volcanic eruption in the nation's capital. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, Mr. Nwebu explains that the occurrence on October 3rd at Mpape, a suburb of Abuja, has been traced to the effect of heat, which dislodged the foundation of an electricity pole, causing it to tilt. Mr. Nwebu says the molten material it discharged emanated from the foot of the short-circuited electricity pole. One thing. We did uh, analysis using our handheld uh, XRF, uh, as well as sending some samples to our laboratory in Kaduna. The result was that we had a preponderance of uh, uh, SiO2, uh, silicon dioxide and aluminium oxide, in addition to FeO203, that's uh, iron oxide. So these are materials uh, from the base of the electric pole so, which means, technically, they are not uh, volcanic uh, materials. We also had to conduct some uh, resistivity studies to know if there were fractures, deep-seated fractures, that could have been a vent for the, if they were actually coming from the deep part of the earth. 
incidentally, the result of the restivity showed us that there were no deep-seated fractures. So we also had to do pitting and as well as augaring, you know, to know the extent of uh, the depth of barrier of the item. And still in the nation's capital, a group known as Women in Aerospace Nigeria is seeking more roles in the nation's space technology. The group made this known when they embarked on a solidarity match to Channel's television office in Abuja as part of their activities to mark this year's World Space Week. Bearing placards with several inscriptions, the women's desire is to encourage the girl child to embrace space technology education and ultimately occupy leadership positions in this sector. The president of the association, Wane Kaibekwe, explained that women are underrepresented in the sector despite the role they have played in the design and management of Nigeria's satellites. And elsewhere, the Industrial Global Union Federation in Nigeria, consisting of seven affiliates, including steel, oil and electricity workers, have held a rally in Lagos to protest precarious work situations in the country. Participants in the rally coming on the heels of the World Day for Decent Work are asking for an end to casualization and poor wages, among other things. Our correspondent, Mary Alali Yusuf, has that story. A meeting to prepare the union for the rally ahead. Affiliate of industrial in Nigeria also called for the immediate action on the issue of minimum wage. Government should expect that action and ensure that that is done without further delay. They are on a mission to stop what they call precarious work situations. A worker that has no right to basic you know, employment uh, uh, conditions, you know, like leave, even appointment letters. Today, we see a situation where the, worker, uh, the, the management don't employ permanent uh, workers anymore. The march around the Yaba area of Lagos carrying placards stating that workers have a right to better conditions of service and to unionize. Our struggle cannot yield result if the opportunity provided by the law are violated with impunity by employers. And, and those who are supposed to be the custodian of the laws are turning their eyes the other way. So today we are calling on the Minister of Labor, Dr. Chris Ngige, to turn on his officials to step up on factory inspection to ensure that health and safety conditions in our workplaces are guaranteed. Based on this, protesters get into cars for a trip to the Ministry of Labor and Productivity at Ikui. They have a letter for the Minister of Labor articulating their complaints. They are looking forward to increased attention to monitoring and enforcement of labor laws which they say already exist. Mary Alale Yusuf, Channels Television News. Many thanks, Mary. Now, when the news at 10 returns, International Monetary Fund cuts its global growth expectations to 3.7%, citing trade tensions between the U.S. and its trading partners. That's after the break. Join us again.